Now, this is a case of hypermature cataract, pseudo exfoliation, posterior sinicae, and probably it is an intubation cataract. It is a non dilating pupil. So, we wanted to go ahead by putting a B hex pupil expander, syncrotomy, pupiloplasty, and all those things put together. Now, in such cases, you will have to make sure since there is posterior sinicae. So, as your rexis is going to the periphery, it is a good idea to break the sinicae in one area and push some dye behind the iris that will stain more of the capsule otherwise you will only stain the visible area of the capsule so there you adrenaline adrenaline now we have stained the capsule well that is the first prerequisite here uh, now we will take two blunt instruments and create a stretch pupiloplasty to start with my rotator and dumbbell so, this is a wire manipulator and this is a blunt Lester's manipulator. So, we use a combination of push and pull and see if we can achieve anything. I do not think it is made much difference. Not much, triploplasty. Now, we will go to the step 2. And you can see probably the zonules are also compromised because of pseudo exfoliation. You can see the whole capsule are back moving. The poor patient. Fully made a reasonable sized uh, capsular opening. Cornea also is, does not seem to be very healthy. Now, the next stage is to break all the sunny care, which may be holding the pupil from expanding further. Needle. You can choose to use a forceps or whatever you are comfortable with. Now, always aim for a larger rexis in a case of pseudo exfoliation because the incidence of capsular phimosis is very high in pseudo exfoliation. So, if you make a large capsular rexis, the chances of pseudo exfoliation causing phimosis and a spontaneous subluxation of the capsular bag are reduced. So, I am aiming for as big capsular rexis as I can in this given situation. And it is a good idea to include the roughing of the anterior capsule in your capsular rexis so that fibrotic part of the capsular axis can be removed. Now, I am aiming for a large capsular axis, largest possible in the given situation. Now, I have gone behind the iris and made my axis come. Now, so now the next thing is the chopping maneuvers have to be very, very careful in these patients. Because as it is a mature cataract has very, very brittle zonules and on top of that our patient is suffering from a pseudo exfoliation. So, we are dealing with a double vanny here. So, without causing much pressure on the zonules, we will do a rotation. Fecus 5560. Now, all the procedures will be done under viscoelastic even entry into the interior chamber because I do not want sudden shallowing or sudden deepening of the interior chamber. You can notice the cornea is already very compromised. Now, since it is a hard cataract, I will expose the phaco tip more so that I get a deeper hold and penetration. I use a special chopper. I call this a Parshuram chopper. It is a 1.85 to 2 millimeter flange. It does help me create a very, very deep chop. The only thing is maneuvering it into the wound is little tricky, but it does save the day most of the time. So, we also have a flappy iris, zonular weakness, hypermature cataract. Now, the trick in such cases is to aim in the center. 
you have to debulk the center that's the hardest part of the nucleus so i'm creating a trench in the center once the trench is created as you near the iris be careful because the iris is floppy you might end up catching the iris and there you are and we go deep into the cataract and split it so you see the beauty of the chopper in one go it has chopped the whole thing for me so even the first case look impossible right planning of the case proper instrumentation and step by step uh, planning has made the job a little easier for the surgeon so we could avoid using a b hex pupil expander in this particular case so the direction of the chopper always has to be vertically downward that's when you get the maximum depth and effective depth of the chopper if you go in a slanting manner like this you will never get a complete depth you go vertically downwards into the depth of the cataract and there you see it creates a beautiful split of the cortical fibers and we are nearly through and as expected there is not much cortical matter in this patient it was a hypermature cataract cornea is decompensated so we are doing a little low phaco and trying to do everything in the iris plane and there we are so once again pointing out to the special feature of this chopper it's a very long chopper it has only got a sharp tip and a cutting tip but the edges are rounded and there we are we are just trying to clean up if there's any residual cortical matter and the surgery is over so as i keep pointing out a good game of chess is planned from the start the first move decides the winner and the loser so we did plan everything accordingly we made a good stretch papilloplasty we did a sphincter trotomy we made a large capsular excess we made sure we did not disturb the zonules we made a deep trench coated the endothelium used a proper chopper so all these things in the end came to our rescue and the surgery is gone perfect i'm just waiting for my assistant to load the lens technically the surgery is over we were planning to use a pupil expander but the patient relative said that they would not be able to afford the procedure and by rotator now we just go and put in a hydrophilic lens but of course a lot of my viewers would not agree with using of a hydrophilic lens but uh, that is the patient's choice we have no option there you are and again while dialing the eyeball you have to be very careful so the exfoliation case so make sure Uh, that you engage and this kind of maneuver is far safer than dialing the whole lens in because you are bending the loop and there so there's less pressure on the capsular bag so there seems to be some amount of viscoelastic or maybe some cortical matter behind the eyeball 27 gauge cannula for hydro 27 gauge so we'll try and wash that away if we can there there we are in business the patient has done very well and there we are thank you